So how much does compounding actually impact the amount owed? Well, let's take a look at a graph to better visualize this. Here's our situation where Jerry has borrowed $500 from Linda. If he's paying simple interest for renting Linda's money, the graph would look like this. It's linear. Simply 50 extra dollars in interest being added to the amount owed each year. Now, let's look at compound interest. If compounded yearly, that is, the amount that Jerry is paying interest on, is updated each year, then it looks like this. In the first year, Jerry pays interest on $500. In the second year, he pays interest on $500 plus $50 or $550, and it grows from there. Note that in the first few years, there's not a lot of difference between simple interest and compound interest. But, as the loan time increases, we eventually see the exponential growth of the compound interest really take off. And we can see the difference between simple interest and compound interest really begin to grow. The longer the loan, the more dramatic the difference is. Now, Linda was definitely smart to ask for compound interest. That is, if the loan ended up being a long-term loan, then the compound interest method is far more fair to her. What if we did compound interest, but we compounded monthly? See how it grows faster than when we compound yearly? Again, the difference becomes a little more dramatic as time grows. If we compounded daily, we'd see even a bit more of a difference. Again, separating more over time. So what can we conclude about all this? Well, simple interest is the simplest situation, just a nice straight line. Compound interest, on the other hand, grows exponentially. It starts off really similar to the simple interest, but as time goes on, it starts to become more dramatically different. Also, we see that the more often we compound, the faster the principal grows, and the more interest being paid. 